Hello all, so in the last video, we talked through how to create some very simple macros. Now macros are great if you have some code that you're gonna be reusing several times throughout the document and you don't really want to have to retype or recopy and paste that code every single time, you can just put it into its own self-contained macro and then it will run that code in the background. So in our example, we had some text that we wanted to highlight, okay? So instead of having to type this code every single time and then obviously just put different inputs in here, um, we showed you how to create a macro whereby this would do it all for you. Now this is fine if you're happy with the fact that every single time you call this macro um, it's going to have a large font size, it's going to be bold and it's going to be red. But there might be some instances where you actually want to override those inputs and you want to have the option to either keep it as default, in other words keep it large, keep it bold, keep it red, or you might want to change for example the font size, the fact whether it's bold or maybe change it to a different colour. And we can totally do that if we use key value pairs. Now, if you're familiar with coding and things like Python, you will probably have seen dictionaries and things like that, which is basically what we're gonna be doing here. So let's show you how this works. So first of all, you come up to where it says use packages, and I'm just gonna add a new package, which is going to be called PGF keys. Now, again, there are different ways of doing this. This is just the way that I like to do this. So the next thing I need to do is actually define a dictionary. In other words, I need to define what the parameters and what the defaults of this particular macro is going to be. So let's come up here. I'm just gonna comment this um, to make sure that you can understand what's happening. And this is gonna be where I'm gonna put my dictionary. So I'm gonna go backslash PGF keys, and then everything inside my curly braces is gonna be where my dictionary is gonna be contained. So I'm just gonna indent that just to sort of make it stand out a little bit more. Now, I'm just gonna give you the code, um, first of all, and then I'll talk loosely about what it means. So the first thing I'm gonna type is forward slash, and then I'm gonna type the name of the macro that I've defined down here. So in my case, it's attention. Then I'm gonna go forward slash dot is space family comma. And then I'm gonna type another forward slash, and then the name of my macro, which is attention, and then separate that with another comma. Literally all this is doing is it's just setting up this dictionary to refer to this particular macro that I've defined down here. So if your macro is called something different, obviously you would type something different here and here. Okay, now I'm gonna put a little comment in just so that you can understand this. So here are the defaults. And by the way, I will be making this code um, available in the comments below. So do feel free to have a look at this if you don't want to, uh, to sort of copy and paste from the screen. Okay, so now what I need to do is I need to go default forward slash dot style. So this is literally where I'm gonna put the defaults in. So I'm gonna go equals and then I'm gonna put a curly brace and I'll just put a comma after the end just for good measure. So basically everything within this, um, these curly braces is gonna be a list of all of the different parameters and the associated defaults that go with them. So just to sort of make this a little bit clearer, I'm actually gonna put this on a new line and I'm also gonna indent this. So what did we say we want the parameters to be and what do we say that we want the defaults to be? So the first one is gonna be the text size and I want this to be a large um, as default. The second parameter is gonna be the bold face font, and I want this to be bold um, as default. And then the last one is gonna be the color, and I want this to be red as default. So I need to give these some names, first of all. Um, the first one uh, is obviously the size, so I'm just gonna call this text size. Again, I can call this whatever I like, but just be careful not to use things that have been defined elsewhere in LaTeX. So I know text size is okay. Then I'm gonna go equals, and then what's the default gonna be? Well, in my case, I want it to be large. Then I separate this with a comma, and then on a new line, I can then put my next parameter. So the next one um, is gonna be whether it's gonna be bold or not. So I'm just gonna go text, style, and then this by default will be BF series, and then comma, and then on a new line, we said the last parameter is gonna be the text color. So text space color is equal to, by default, red. And then again, I can put a comma there. Now the point is you can put as many parameters in here as you like to refer to your macro. And again, you do not have to call them text size, text style, and text color. You can call them whatever you like. Also notice that you are totally free to use spaces. Now usually LaTeX is very fussy about spaces, but in this case, it is totally fine. You can use spaces here. All right. So now what I wanna do, now I've defined what those defaults are, I'm gonna give them a command so that I can refer to them down in my macro. So let's put hashtag, oh sorry, um, percentage, store the defaults 
in a command. Okay, so then I can actually refer to them. So what are the commands that I'm gonna be referring to? Well, I'm gonna be referring to first of all text size. So text size, and then I'm gonna go forward slash dot store space in equals, and then I need to give it a command. So I'm just gonna call it backslash txt size. Okay, really unimaginative. And then I'll do the same for the other ones. So we've got text style is the other parameter. And I'm going to go forward slash dot store space in. And that's going to be backslash txt and style. And then the last one is just going to be the color. So text color, that's the name. Um, forward slash dot store in equals backslash txt color. Awesome. And I'm just going to use a comma just for good measure there. Okay. So really it's a two-step process when you're defining your dictionary. First of all, you define what the defaults are. And then secondly, you need to give each of those parameters um, a command so then you can refer to them down in the macro. So let's come down to the macro now. So here's my macro. Um, in fact, I'll just call this my macro just to make it clear. So I'll come down to my macro. And you notice that by default, I've got large. Well, I can now just reuse the commands that I've given to um, the large, which is just text size. So you notice I've called it the command txt size. So I'm gonna replace this with txt size. And what that's gonna do is it's gonna refer up to this dictionary and it's gonna go, ah, right, txt size you've typed there. Well, that corresponds to the name text size. And by default, that is large, okay? Then I'll just do it for the BFC series, which is obviously the TXT style. And this one is gonna be TXT color as well. Okay, just one more thing to do and then we're almost there. Firstly, you notice up here that I've got this brackets, this square brackets and then one. I now need to change this to be two because there could be two inputs here. There could be one for the text that I'm highlighting and then another if I need to override any of the text size, text style and text color. And actually to that effect, because when I override the defaults, I'm gonna be using square brackets, just after where I put this square brackets around the two, I need to just put an empty set of square brackets. And that just tells LaTeX that it's expecting one of the inputs um, to be square brackets. And then just before where I've defined um, what my command is gonna be, so inside my curly braces, I'm gonna actually call in the, uh, the key value pair. So I'm gonna go PGF keys, open and close brackets, I want to refer to the dictionary up here, which is called attention. Okay, so I'm gonna go forward slash attention. And then, yep, and then, let's make sure I spell that right. So yeah, forward slash attention, and then comma. Basically, I now need to tell LaTeX that look, it's not always gonna be the case that I'm gonna give um, some defaults to override. Sometimes I do just want you to use these defaults up here. So I need to tell LaTeX, if I haven't given you the input to override it, just use the defaults, okay? So I'm just gonna use the default style. And then it's gonna to refer to number one, so the input number one here. And actually to that effect, I need to change this input, which remember corresponds to the text that I want to highlight. That should be my second input now, okay? So I need to change that to number two. So you can see this is input number one, which is gonna basically be if I need to override any of the defaults up here. And then input number two is gonna be what the text I actually want to use is. Okay, so now we've crossed our fingers and it should be the case that I don't actually need to change anything down here in the first instance. So if I just recompile this, nothing should change on the right hand side, as expected. But what I can now do, and this is a really smart thing, is if I come between where I've called my command attention and the text which I want to highlight in curly braces, and if I put square brackets, I can now override any of the defaults. So let's suppose, for example, I want to change the text color. So the command or the parameter which I've given um, to call the text color is text space color. So I'll come down here in my square brackets, I go text space color, and I'll just change that to be blue, for example. Now if I recompile, you can see that it's still doing everything that I want it to do, like it's still bold and it's still large, but now I've changed the text color from the default, which is red, to the one that I've defined, which is blue. Equally, I might want to change the text size, okay? So I just separate with a comma and I go text space size equals, and let's maybe make this small. So I'll just go backslash small. Now, if I recompile this, you can see on the right-hand side, this text is now coming in as small. Or perhaps I might wanna change it to be huge just to kind of really emphasize that. So backslash huge. 
Now again, you notice that it's still bold because I haven't overridden that input, but I could absolutely change that. So I think, well, obviously I'm gonna be using text style and I think to make it ordinary is MD series. Let's see. Yes, it is, okay? So you can see here I've overridden the default. So the point is I can override the defaults in any way that I like. Also notice that I do not have to have them in the order that they appear up here. So I don't have to have the size first, then the style, then the color, okay? I can put them in any order I like. So in this case, I've changed the text color first, then I've changed the text size, then I've changed this text style. But now if I take out, for example, the text size, it will just go back to the default, okay? Which is gonna be um, the large. If I also take out the text color and just keep it as MD series, then again, I can just change it back to red. So the point is I can override any of the defaults, but if I come down here and I wanna make this in attention, notice that this time I'm not giving any inputs. So um, here is the default. So as a result, LaTeX is going to go, ah, oh, right, okay, you haven't given me any defaults here. As a result, um, I'm just going to be using all the defaults which I've defined up here. So the point is, is look, you've got your macro up here. Um, if you just want to define the defaults, you can put them in a dictionary. And then if you want to override any of the defaults when you call the command, the macro down here, you can absolutely do so with the square brackets. So pretty neat, I think.